sun. However many years anyone may live, let them enjoy them all. But let them remember the days of darkness, for there will be many. Everything to come is meaningless. You who are young, be happy while you are young. And let your heart be in joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart, and whatever your eyes see, but know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. So then, banish anxiety from your heart, and cast off the troubles of your body, for youth and vigour are meaningless. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark, and the clouds return after the rain, and the keepers of the house tremble, and the strong men stoop, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those looking through the windows grow dim, when the doors to the street are closed and the sound of grinding fades, and people rise up at the sound of birds, but all their songs grow faint. When people are afraid of heights and of dangers in the streets, when the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper drags itself along and desire no longer is stirred, then people go to their eternal home and mourners go about the streets. Remember him before the silver cord is severed and the golden bowl is broken. Before the pitcher is shattered at the spring and the wheel broken at the well and the dust returns to the ground it came from and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Everything is meaningless. Uh, let's come back to that passage in Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 11 and 12 on page 678, page 678. Is that and we'll face it, and it comes in uh, the last 
verse that Jane read for us. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. But the 12 verse said, meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Everything is meaningless. With the idea that everything is just sort of fl a fleeting breath here today and gone tomorrow. We've had this picture of this breath. It's just there for a second, it's on camera, but it's there for a second, then it's gone. And the teacher wants to tell us that our lives are like that. They're just like a breath that is here today and gone tomorrow. The teacher's focusing on this life under the sun. In some ways, he leads the eternity to the rest of the Bible. He's just focusing on life under the sun as we have it in the here and now. And so he warns us that life is fleeting. Death is going to come inevitably very soon. And our lives, while we wait, are pretty random and can be hard. So that's the first thing he wants to teach us. The second thing is, well, why is life like that? And the answer is because God has made it like that. God wants to humble us and make us fear him. He wants us to understand that God is God and we are not. That God is seated on his throne, ruling the universe, and we are not. This is our simple rebellion. We often like to think that we are the ones who should be ruling our lives. But Ecclesiastes tells us that often thwarts our desires, often thwarts our wants, because he wants us to understand that he is God and we are not. And thirdly, we've seen that God is a very generous God. He gives us many gifts from God. We've got this beautiful sunny day that we're enjoying today. Food, drink, friendship, relationships, marriage. All good gifts that we can gratefully enjoy. Now, verse 7 and 8 of what Jane read for us is sort of a very good summary of that. Light is sweet, it pleases the eye, the eyes to see the sun. So, it's another thing that we can enjoy. It's a beautiful day, we can look outside, it is a lovely day. Last week, uh, we had those pictures of the eclipse uh, in, in the Americas. Four minutes, I think, roughly you get when the, the uh, moon goes across the front of the sun and it's dark. And everyone's really excited. It looked very exciting to watch. But imagine if, for some reason, the darkness had continued beyond the four minutes. If the darkness had remained, that would be very scary. Light is good. To see the sun is great. I think yesterday was the first day we sat outside in our garden for the first time this year. It was lovely. It was very nice. Light is sweet, and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. And the teacher reminds us to enjoy these things, however old we are. Verse 8, chapter 11, verse 8. However many years anyone may live, let them enjoy them all. To enjoy these things, they're great. But he goes on. But let them remember the days of darkness, for there will be many. Everything to come is meaningless. Everything to come is brief. Everything on this earth is brief. Darkness will come. Maybe he's there referring to the fact that as we grow older, our eyes do fade. But also he's pointing towards the fact that we will die, and then our eyes will never see anything more on this earth. So he then begins to apply this message, particularly as I say to young people. Enjoy your youth, but remember God's judgment. Enjoy your youth, but remember God's judgment. But as, as he answers the message to young people, let's not say uh, there are definitely messages for the rest of us as well. But maybe he's particularly concerned about young people because. The young people are maybe most likely to forget about death, forget about God, and forget about judgment. So he begins in verse 9. And what does he want young people to be in verse 9? That's, a, that's what we need to do in the work. What does he want young people to do in verse 9? Is there a bit of feedback? Time to So what does, he want, what does he want young people to do in verse 9? He wants them to be happy. 
Exactly. He wants them to enjoy what is going on. And the most new thing is great, isn't it? There's so many things that God gives us when we're young. There's uh, jumping around and not having to worry about what you eat and staying up all night and barely being able to function the next day. And all these things that God gives us. One of my deep research lists, I ended up on YouTube yesterday afternoon watching a video of people called People Are Awesome. The best of 2013, about 15 minutes, and it is amazing. They're amazing gymnastics and acrobats, so people jumping out of planes, people jumping off cliffs, people bending their bodies in the most extraordinary different directions. So I'm getting one picture. Uh, but the, the one that really got me there were people who were doing handstands and firing bows and arrows with their feet and their toes and hitting the bullseye. I assume they probably have to do a lot of shooting before they hit the bullseye, but anyway, it was amazing to say. And, um, uh, and then, as I say, you know, there's this chess championship going on, there's a 17 year old who's been playing, playing a six hour game. And the, uh, the interviewer said, you're, you're a bit tired of all these calculations and so forth. Right? Um, of course, I saw somebody who was 30 year old who said, you know, because you acknowledge that some one point in the game, It's amazing being young. The brain works, the mind works, the body works. It is great. But in verse 9, we get the bump. What happens after the bump in verse 9? Again, if you will work. <coughs> these amazing and fantastic abilities. God has given us these amazing bodies. Enjoy it, be happy, but don't forget where it all comes from. Don't forget that we're accountable to the God who made us. And it's in the next verse, how does God describe it? Well, as our creator, remember your creator, he's the one who's given you this amazing body. He's the one who's given you this amazing mind. Don't forget that God made you, and he will call you to himself whenever he decides and you'll have to stand before him and give an account of your life. That's why trusting in Jesus is so important. It's only through his sacrifice, only through his death can our sins be forgiven so that we can face that judgment with confidence. Yes, enjoy life. Yes, enjoy your youth. Enjoy what God has given you. But don't forget that you're accountable to him he gave it to you. You are answerable to him. Remember his judgment. Hold on to Jesus. So that's the first point. The second one is we need to remember aging. Remember aging. <coughs> so twelve verse one. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. And then we get to an amazing description of what it means to be old. The aging process. It's a very poignant description. Now, 
that's not clear what each line means in this verse. We're just going to look at this week. Work through it. Verse 3, the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men stoop. Well, we looked at that image of, I think it was Ali, wasn't it? That image of Muhammad Ali. He's not quite stooping, but he's clearly struggling. He was a strong man to say, stooping. And that will be us one day. When the grinders cease, because they are few, and those looking through the windows grow dim. Again, there's this image of people not really being able to see out. Again, this image of darkness, of our eyes beginning to fail. Verse 4, when the doors to the street are closed, talk of getting there, although it's become housebound. It's too difficult to go out. It's just easier to remain indoors. Verse 4, and the sound of the grinding fails, fades. When people rise up at the sound of birds, but all their songs grow faint. Think of the image of an old person waking up early. The other thing that comes is that sounds are growing faint. But here's another part of the body that fails. Our hearing. It doesn't work as well when we get old. We can't hear as well. When my mother would say she'll go to, a, 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 to go have lunch with some people, they're more than two or three people. She really can't understand what's going on. She just, they just her ears don't work well. Give you a hearing aid. So they're able to be able to concentrate on one conversation. It's just like a uh, it's a wall of noise coming at her. Verse 5. When people are afraid of heights and the dangers of the streets. You see, often older people don't like to go out. They become housebound. They're afraid of falling. They're afraid of being knocked over in some way. There are dangers in the streets. When people just go out and their clothes will be knocked and jostled about. It doesn't happen at home. But those people are right. They might fall to the ground. They might be able to get up again. When the almond tree blossoms, I think it's a description of well, whatever colour your hair is when it starts, it's only going in one direction. Right away. And the grasshopper drags itself along. Again, you've got an agile insect, the grasshopper that bounces around so easily. And here is the image of a grasshopper dragging itself along. I had a friend at school, uh, he was in the athletics team, and as he grew older, as he sort of went through his early teenage years, he would get faster and faster and faster. One day when he was about 17, he ran the fastest time he'd ever run in 400 meters. And he assumed that that trend would go on and on into the end of his late teenage years and his early 20s, that that would continue. But it never did. He got injured. Other things came along, and he never ran a better time. That process of his body beginning to break down had begun. One day, he and the rest of us will be like a grasshopper that drags itself along. And desire no longer is stirred. See, I'm just quoting mainly talking about sexual desire. But there are other desires as well. Much of our passion, much of our desire is gone in old age. In the book of 1 Kings, there's, the, there's a, a story about King David as an old man. Now, David in his youth certainly had plenty of desire. Um, he had multiple wives. He clearly did not lack sexual desire. In fact, it was a weakness that led to his downfall through an affair with one of his soldiers. But at the end of the life, his life, we're told that he could not keep warm. It's another problem with old age. And so they bring a young woman to him to serve him and to keep him warm. We're told that he, she is beautiful. And maybe you're thinking, hey, I know what this means. I know what David's mm -hmm. into. But we're told that David had no sexual relationship with her. The desire was clearly no longer stirred in David. But he was certain and he kept him warm. Here again is this image of a person whose age has caught up with them. There's no pleasure. The eyes are going, the hearing's going, the bodies are giving up. They're afraid to go out. There's no desire. And the teacher is saying to young people, in fact, saying to all of us, <coughs> it won't be long. Will be 
If we make sense of our lives on this earth, those two realities of aging and death, we have to take hold of them. Let's pray that God will teach us wisdom. And we need to take hold of Christ as our Lord, as our Savior, and all that He has about eternal life and gives us. We need to take hold of it. God in our hand. So let's pray to God that God will teach us <coughs> to live right, wisely. Live wise in the face of anything in our death, and to live wise by taking hold of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you that you are such a generous and great creator God. We praise you that you made us <coughs> and delight us to enjoy you. We see that this morning. That you make our amazing bodies and our amazing minds. There are so many good things that we can joy when we're young or old, but for all these things we want to praise you and thank you because we fill our hearts with praise and thanks. <coughs> and Father, we know that so often, maybe especially when we're young, but at other stages, <coughs> we so easily forget you and think that we'll live forever, that our youth will be <coughs> So easy to forget that one day you will call our spirits back to you. One day, Father, we thank you for the teaching. We thank you for the sobering lessons. We thank you for reminding us about aging, for reminding us about death, for reminding us about <coughs> Father, teach us wisdom. Teach us this reality. And Father, we pray that we might take hold of Christ, your Savior, the one who can bring us peace with you on that day of judgment. One who can take us into eternal glory. 